Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to present a case report scientific paper on posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome in childhood leukemia. My name is Dr. Amar Topal. I am the second year postgraduate trainee in the Department of Radio Diagnosis, Nilatan Sirkar Medical College and Hospital, Kolkata. So, Posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, that is PRESS, is a clinical radiological syndrome characterized by headaches, seizures, altered mental status, and visual loss, and featured by white matter vasogenic edema affecting the posterior occipital and parietal lobes of the brain predominantly. PRESS was first described in 1996 by Hinche et al. It is commonly, but not always, associated with acute hypertension. The clinical syndrome is being increasingly recognized commonly because of improvement and availability of brain imaging. Associated conditions with PRESS are hypertension, preeclampsia or eclampsia, exposure to immunosuppressive drugs, chemotherapy, renal failure, infection or sepsis or shock, and autoimmune diseases like acute glomerulonephritis and lupus nephropathy. In this case, we have present our case of a precursor B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia patient with sudden onset neurological symptoms who was walked up using clinical findings, blood parameters, and MRI findings. MRI was done using a GE Cigna HD 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner. Imaging features of posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome were found. Now coming to the clinical history. He is a five-year-old boy admitted in the hematology department suddenly, who suddenly developed hypertension, altered sensorium, visual disturbances, and seizures five days after starting off chemotherapy regimen for pre-B-cell ALL. His diagnosis of pre-B-cell ALL was done by peripheral blood smear, bone marrow examination, and immunohistochemistry. He had been started on a regimen with of daily 6 marcaptopurin and weekly tablet methotrexate along with IV vincristine and a steroid dexamethasone. Intrathecal methotrexate was also given to the patient. After the onset of the symptoms, blood parameters revealed an elevated CRP along with a very low platelet. Other hematological and blood biochemistry were in line with his disease condition. He was promptly started on antiepileptics and antihypertensive and an MRI brain was done. The MRI is revealed features suggestive of posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. Thus, we came to a clinical radiological diagnosis of PRESS. Slowly, a progressive movement of clinical symptoms, neurological symptoms, and cognitive status was observed along with treatment. His chemotherapeutic regimen was restarted one month later. Now, coming to the imaging findings. Here, we will be comparing the imaging findings at the onset of symptoms and post-resolution of symptoms. At the onset of symptoms, axial brain MR sh imaging showed cortical and subcortical hyperintensities due to vasogenic edema on T2 FRFSE weighted images. Whereas post-resolution of symptoms, axial brain MR imaging showed absence of hyperintensities due to near resolution of the vasogenic edema. Similar findings were found in T2 flare weighted images in which at the onset of symptoms there were cortical and subcortical hyperintensities which had resolved post-resolution of symptoms. Now coming to T2 GRE sequences that were taken during the scan. In the D2 GRE sequence at the onset of symptoms, actual brain MR imaging showed areas of focal patchy hemorrhages involving bilateral, parietal and occipital lobes and right temporal lobe appearing as blooming artifact on T2 GRE sequence. Whereas on post-resolution of symptoms, his brain, the MRI showed resolution of the focal hemorrhages that were seen earlier. And lastly, we come to DWI images. In DWI images, as we can see clearly over here at the onset of symptoms, there is an area of hyperintensity, which is actually the T2 shine through that is noted over here and which has resolved post-resolution of symptoms. Now coming to the discussion part. Posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, that is PRESS, was first described by Hinche et al. in 1996. Though the pathogenesis of PRESS is yet to be understood, the most widely accepted explanation is cerebral autoregulation and increased perfusion with vasodilation.
there is a greater predisposition for the regions of the posterior circulation of the brain likely due to relatively lesser sympathetic innervation than anterior circulation. Axial MR imaging showed reversible vasogenic edema in the cortical and subcortical white matter of the parieta occipital region in the most patients. In addition to a predominance for the parieta occipital region, involvement of the frontal lobe, the posterior portion of the superior frontal gyrus and the temporal lobe can also be seen. Cerebellum, brainstem and thalamus are generally spared. Trace can be complicated by the presence of hemorrhage as seen in our case, which demonstrated as focal patchy hemorrhages. This was in accordance with a study conducted by McKinney et al. 2007. On DWI weighted images, though the most common finding is ISO intensity, but DWI bright T2 shine through as seen in our case can also be found. Diffusion restriction, which is usually punctate, surrounded by much larger areas of vasogenic edema with no ensuing atrophy can also be found. This is in accordance to the studies conducted by Benezidia Bordor et al., McKinney et al., and Covarubias et al. Apart from MRI, the other modalities of imaging that can be done in case of press is this. In case of CT, the affected regions are generally hypoatinating. And in angiography, there are signs of vasopressum or arteritis like diffuse vasoconstriction, focal vasoconstriction, or vasodilatation, or a string of bead appearance. Now, the major differentials for posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome are posterior circulation, ischemia infarction, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, that is PML, vasculitis, encephalitis, and sinovenous thrombosis. Thus, to conclude, Trace is a neurotoxic state coupled with an unique MR imaging appearance. Hypertension is believed to be the unifying precipitating factor in many cases, but may, it may occur also in normal telsips. Corticosteroid therapy primarily mediated by its effect on the mineral corticoid receptor may lead to hypertension, which may be the etiology of brace in this patient. But the implication of other cytotoxic drugs cannot be excluded. Hence, all patients on steroids should have strict blood pressure monitoring. And given the widespread use of steroids in the field of hematology, it is important to recognize PACE as a rare but usually reversible complication, especially in pediatric patients receiving treatment for acute lymphoblastic leukemia and appropriate treatment should be initiated accordingly after ruling out other causes, which could result in a similar clinical presentation like CNS hemorrhage, CNS leukemic infiltration, and encephalitis. These are the references that I have used in my studies. Thank you for hearing me. Goodbye.